Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West Channel. Well here's a snow shovel that was on its way to the dump. I broke the handle while I was using it for mulch, but it was pretty much worn out when I started using it for mulch. You know that front edge wears off of them. But uh, it got rained on all day yesterday, so there's plenty of moisture in it and you can feel it. But this is probably some kind of oak or some kind of hardwood, so it should be pretty good on the inside. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can make a bow drill set out of this. Um, I want to take and cut this handle off right here, about right here, and see if I can use this as a lubed bearing block as the friction melts down the plastic. Maybe it won't wear it away too fast, and this will make a good bearing block. And I see some straight grain in here. Let's try some feathers. Let's see. Let's see if it'll produce. Pretty coarse, but they'll make decent tender. Let's cut that head off. Just as if we were gonna use this for a frying pan handle right here. And like I thought, it looks like it's good and dry on the inside of this piece of oak. And this could be like a frying pan handle. I would not mind eating eggs, steak, squirrel, boiled water for cocoa and coffee off of this at all. Even though it has those galvanized rivets in it right there. That's a good survival frying pan right there. Let's go ahead and cut this off of the bearing block. We'll cut it off right here. That's the way I hold it right here. Well, let's see if we can get a little divot right here. I have no idea if this plastic will hold up to all that friction, but we're about to find out. I used plastic one time inside of a bearing block as lube and it melted it down and the melted plastic got in the end of the spindle and that spindle stayed friction free for a long, long time just because the melted plastic had soaked up into it. So maybe this is some more of that, that type of plastic. So the bearing block is done. Now, let me get rid of this right here. Now. Let's see if we can get some scrapings off of this for the tinder bundle. A lot of times hardwoods will scrape. And looks like this is gonna be good to scrape. Perfect for increasing the ember. And to keep from having to do too much work, let's go ahead and just chip out. I'm going to cut a groove around here about a quarter inch deep 
and then chip out chip out the grain, which will leave about an inch an inch nipple exposed. And we'll do the same thing for the barren block end. Now let's chip that out of there. And yes, I'll be losing some RPMs because I'm keeping the part where the uh, the bow drives the spindle. I'll be losing some RPMs, but I don't care how long it takes to get an ember or how many strokes it takes to get an ember. true that up. This side needs to come down a lot more. All right, let's see if we can split out the fireboard now. What do you think? Ought to work. As hard as this wood is, that's plenty of nipple sticking out on that end. That should be good up in the barren block. Let's take a good look at this. There's our really coarse shavings, and we got some medium shavings and then some fines right here. And we'll put our amber right in there. Let's go ahead and do a burn in now. Curious to see if our barren block's gonna hold up. The burn in should tell us. All right. Let's see now. Possibly oak on oak. Oak tender bundle. nowhere on that spindle tip at all just a little bit of melt out over here on the barren block good dark burn in 
Let me cut my notch and we'll try this thing out. That's one of the good plastics right there. Very little melt, no wear on the spindle tip at all. Great looking tip on the hot end of the spindle. You might have thought that was too short of a tip, but as hard as this wood is, that'll give up a lot of ambers before I need to expose more tip. That is a huge ember. Let's let it just sit there like that for about a minute and see if our next breath will bring it to flames. Let me get it good and hot and we'll let it sit for a minute. Now, let's just let that sit for a minute. 
and see if what I think I know about these tender these shavings tender bundles are right is right. Went pretty deep into my board. I wanted to make sure that I had enough material, enough dust in my pile. Oh, for those of you that don't know, I used to try, I used to try to use a shavings tender bundle. It just makes sense if you're using poplar, use poplar shavings for a tender bundle, pine or any other kind of wood. But I saw early on that when you try to get one to ignite the flames, it just turns into a bigger and bigger ember without ever going to flames. So I stopped using it. That's why you see me use pine needles and leaves and all kinds of other tinder bundles. But I've noticed over the years that if you leave a good hot, if you let a good hot ember just sit in there and just sit there and hot and expel moisture and there might be something going on with wood gas in there too. For about a minute, your next breath, it'll go to flames. So we've given it way more than a minute. Let's give it a gentle breath and see if it goes to flames. It works. Now, before I transfer this into the stove, this has got to burn for a while and get good and hot so it can withstand me transferring it into the stove. So, and like I said, I left enough handle on this side in case I ever did want to use it for a frying pan stick it right on top of the coals I would do it I promise you I would eat off of this no problem that old wives tale that uh, aluminum causes Alzheimer's and it causes all kinds of problems no it's not true it's it's been disproved that snow shovel did not make it to the dump before I thought that it would make a good bow drill set. Y'all get out there and practice. You don't have to do oddball off the wall uh, projects like I do, but get out there and try some easy materials and work your way up to these stranger experiments. All practice is good practice. All right, y'all. I appreciate you joining me on this one wheel. Catch you on the next one.